Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, this is going to be another one of the publisher's rendition of his own song, story. This one is called The Lonely Highway. Now I want y'all to understand a little bit about The Lonely Highway. This is completely fictional except for the parts that are true okay so it's fictional except for the parts that are true so I want y'all to come take a journey with me for a moment oh didn't mean to click do that click the button to get started oh, God. that's tripod.com it has a uh, pop-ups pop-ups and what it doesn't like is me doing that but this is called the lonely highway and I'm going to do the best I can to read it so y'all can understand. Turn the volume down a little bit on the uh, Microsoft Windows Media Player. There we go. We can handle that, what can we? All right. It was time. I had planned and I had waited eight months. I had my 1960 MG tuned up enough sick leave to stay away for eight weeks. My MG, that was my baby, bought brand new by my father. And when he died in 1990, he left it to me. Original everything. My dad kept her prime condition. He would park Roxy, well, that was the name he called her. He would park her in storage. He kept her covered and ordered for the staff to only start her up. There were some very strict rules. No tapping on the gas pedal, no engaging of the transmission, and most importantly, no, absolutely no, leaving her turned on past seven minutes and 26 seconds. He even had a time clock in the car to make sure they followed his instructions. Never a breakdown or need for repair. He did have her 600,000 mile engine overhauled and only with the assurance that no new parts would be used. That was his baby. He would say to me, Chris, I want you to know that I love you. And although it may not seem that way at times, know that I do but if you ever put your hands on Roxy I will tear your naked hide off you I didn't dare touch her because I knew one thing about that when it came to anything else I could get away unscathed but not Roxy he put too much time and money and love into her oh I should have told you Roxy was my mother's name she bought the MG my, for my dad as a graduation present when he came out of Berkeley. Top honors and with an $86,000 a year job. Keep in mind, this was 1959 and dad was 27 years old, studying to be a lawyer and a darn good one at that. He started the firm that I now work for. My mother and dad were a match made in heaven. They were married in 1958 after Dad returned from the Korean War and were so much in love that Mother went to Berkeley with Dad and studied law just to be by his side. Dad also took up nursing just so that Mother would not be the only one to make sacrifices. You might be wondering how could Dad come out of the Korean War one year and graduate the following? Well. He was drafted from college, where he had been with mother since 1950, right after they married in 1956. My mother hated being away from him, so she willingly joined the army and volunteered in the mass unit. The army would not let her serve alongside dad, although I knew she would have if dad hadn't reminded her that the military back then, women did not carry guns. They did not fight in battles. If you knew anything about the army mass units, you would disagree quickly and forcibly that women were employed to fight and to protect the unit. 
we're going to stop right there. I got to get the uh, find out while the music isn't playing because that was too quick. Oh, okay. I see why it ain't playing because it's only a couple of seconds. This one ain't that long. It's supposed to be long, but it ain't that long. So we're going we gonna to go to something that's a lot longer. There we go. Let it drop in there. Be patient. We'll get back to the Lonely Highway in just a moment. This is how we do it. All right. When they were both allowed to return to the States, they took up where they left off. Can you imagine two lawyers and MDs, husband and wife? They were a team. Then mother bought dad the MG, the car of his dreams. He was not to be outflanked though. To mother's surprise, after she gave him the keys to the car, dad started laughing. And so much so that he was crying and mother didn't really know what to take of it until he told her to walk over to the garage and when he opened it there was the exact same car make model color mileage everything identical it was said great minds think alike well in my folks case that was all too true mother and dad were lawyers and vacation medical doctors mother because she was a woman could not command the same salary as a man despite her expertise they encouraged her not to give up so she would become a defense attorney doing excuse me during that time only excuse me one of only one of the only females to hold that position sorry everyone she would take on any case to prove her skills innocent or guilty it didn't matter she would take the case one of her first case was the trotter versus united states trial trotter was a black man accused of killing a white businessman and his pregnant wife everybody said she was nuts that the case would ruin her promising but short career mother and dad would talk it over for about a week and dad would finally say whatever choice you make I'm right there with you but she would tell him for the first time in their relationship that this was something she had to do alone that she had to prove to the world not to him that she was a capable trial lawyer. She would go and meet with Wilton Trotter, who was not your poster child for innocence. Assaults, battery, robbery, illegal guns, and of course, trespassing charge. And of all places, the store of the white businessman's establishment. This was a trial about racism and revenge. That's how the press put it. My mother would meet with Mr. Trotter every day, even Sundays for four weeks. She believed she had to get to know her client as he truly was. So, as to give him a proper defense, Wilton Trotter did not trust her at first. Why? Who can blame him? The whites seek to have him put to death for the murder of three white people and a white woman representing him? But he really had no choice. Neither the colored lawyers wanted to take the case for fear of their image mother told him plainly how the case looked she explained to him that she believed him and would fight and not give up i guess by her showing up every day he saw she was sincere now everyone who saw my mother would say oh you sweet little angel they were not the ones who really knew her remember she was in the army she wanted to fight plus she married dad she could handle the media, cr trotter, the, cr the trial, the judge, if need be. She could not afford an investigator, so Dad decided to help. Then came the court order, ordering Dad to sever himself away from any portion of the trotter case. His firm was hired, we believe purposely, to represent the state. The order also meant that they had to stay away from each other for the duration of the trial. You talk about an angry woman. I believe at this point she was capable of murder herself. She moved near the scene of the crime to get to know the people and the neighborhood. She would still have further problems. Trotter heard about the court order. Although mother had already told him, he got word from a group, the Panthers, who all of a sudden showed interest in the case. They wanted him to dismiss my mother and allow them to help get him the death penalty 
plus now the nation was sitting at attention watching and speculating then Trotter told mother I don't really know what I what to think you believe in me from the beginning I want to thank you but maybe my own people will do better I mean you being a woman and all there was silence I would have not wanted to be there in Trotter's shoes especially after what he had just said mother got up walked over to his side of the desk and slapped him in the face and then she said first of all I'm not no woman I am all you got no one else could care if you're innocent no one else could even investigate this case by moving into your old apartment and neighborhood by the way I got rid of all your old furniture last night after living there for three and a half weeks I know more about you than your own mother. I found Hugo. A look of embarrassment and shame came across his face. Then she said, I am more convinced now than ever before of your innocence. That's why I bought you all new furniture and paid your rent for the next 10 months. You will have a home to go to. Crisis averted. Mother was on the case for good. But because she was a woman, in the room with a murderer the cameras and officers were looking on the slap on the face was shown on the evening TV channels throughout the country and the newspapers had a field day then dr. King gave his opinion which was based on sheer ignorance however mother was a clever woman she immediately scheduled a press conference she made it appear that she would step away from the case it was to be held seven days later, two weeks before jury selection. All of the stations and the press were there, and the suspense had risen. She would not be seen during the seven days to build up speculation. And then, on the press conference morning, she showed up an hour late, purposely making it appeared that she had found some shocking new evidence she began her statement like this good afternoon I apologize for my being late yet I was completing my investigation and found first I want to explain the slapping of Wilton Trotter in the face the media and the state have attempted to portray him as a violent man who seeks revenge especially towards whites a killer I purposely slapped him in the face after making him upset. If you watch the film closely, you will see he's taken totally off guard and by complete surprise. But if you take a better examination, he does not get upset with me. A white woman, a female, the so-called enemy. I have taken the liberty of taking up Mr. Rotter's, or Mr. Trotter's past investigation. all of the incidents that the state has been feeding the media and the press all of the witness statements the reports and have mailed a copy of each to all interesting groups you do the research and take note of how each time mr trotter was never charged he was a spectator who would refuse to leave the scene the trespassing was again a refusal to leave because he bumped into an undercover police officer he was charged with assault there is only one other person who believes in mr. Wilton Trotter's innocence besides myself and that's the one who committed this crime I have proof I have all the proof I need to prove that mr. Wilton Trotter's is innocent but it must be heard in court you people have ruined this man's life and vindication will only come during trial before you ask if I know who the real, real killer is I must say no my job is to prove my clients innocent and not to prove another woman's I, I mean I mean another man's guilt she had done it doubts surprise suspense all potential jurors now baited she knew who the killer was several clues was left at the scene of the jury store plus there was a camera that the police had missed set up to take pictures of those entering the store it had been robbed so many times the owner was just fed up give me one moment folks
I apologize. The jury selection time. Uh oh. All white jurors are chosen. No, not one black. And get this, not one man. Twelve women on the Trotters juror are doomed to, excuse me, are doomed to be man, you would think. At least Trotter thought so. But mother had told him to trust her and to not let what he hears the press say disturb him. She spoke with so much confidence that it was contagious. For now, Wilton was the most at peace man in the world. Mother was in the army, the mass unit. Guess what? Part. Yep, investigations. She would let the state present its case and would reserve all questions for the presentation of her case. They made him out to look like a demon gone bad. Even comments was, every comment was, this black man white unborn child yep to touch the heartstrings of the white women fear of black men anger at the death and murder of a white woman and unborn child oh and the only evidence they had against him was that he was at the scene after the murder three witnesses testified that they had seen him at the scene the day prior and he had refused to leave that was it that was their case no murder weapon. Oh, by the way, it was an axe. No blood on his clothes. No, keep in mind, he was there just minutes before the murder, or after the murder. And standing with all the other passerbyers. No one would listen to the man. He was guilty, and it was perfect, an evil crime. A black suspect, keeping with tradition. Mother turned. She bought, brought the officer who had spoke with Mr. Trotter and arrested him and questioned him about Mr. Trotter's mentioning the words, the camera, the camera, and how they refused to listen. Then she called to the stand Mrs. Brother Heimerstein, the deceased woman's sister. She would allow her to talk about the family's relationship and finances and after one day's worth of testimony, mother would ask the court for an 18 hour recess. She needed to go to the crime scene one more time, is what she told the court, and the court would grant this. But Mother would take the reporters with her, and then she would show them how she believed the killer got away. She found it. She thought that it would happen. Time for court the next day. Mrs. Rother Hamstein, Mother, began, You said yesterday that you were doing quite well financially and that you and your brother-in-law were good friends. May I ask you, why is this loan from, my, from your brother-in-law's company addressed to you if you were so well established? Then after a blabbling answer, an objection by the attorney for the state, mother would tell the judge that there was some newly discovered evidence and it would help support the foundation of her questioning if a uh, Miss Rother Heimstein the judge would allow it. What had occurred is that mother had set up a camera, this time a video one, and left the original camera and after developing the negative, placed it back in the camera. She had purposely told the media that it was a woman. Then she tried to cover it up. She did not want the killer to run and then she baited the trap. She knew the killer would surface and still attempt to cover their tracks. So she would say things to the camera and the press. She would take an all-female jury, erase suspicion, and it all worked. The camera showed Mrs. Brother Hamstein going through the store, finding the camera and the negative, and then printing up a check in her brother-in-law's names, which she would eventually cash, yet it did not provide a murder weapon. It was Wilton's turn 
he took the stand, mother would ask him about why he and Mr. Other Heimerstein were arguing. Then he had refused to pay, excuse me, he would explain that he was a penny pincher, that he had refused to pay for a better camera. Then the shocking truth, Mr. Trotter reveals unwillingly that he is a freelance snoop. He had been hired to tape and follow Mrs. Rutherhamstein around. The sister-in-law and he were sleeping together, and the wife had found out, so she hired Mr. Trotter. Mr. Trotter was secretly working for both of them and being paid by both. Then his secret, he had a camera attached to the lens of a telescope. He would use it to videotape the female showering and others having sex. A very embarrassed man on the stand, then it was time. One moment. Mother played the part of Hugo, this video, and had Mr. Trotter identify it. And moments later, it shows Mrs. Rutherhamiston pulling an axe out of the trunk of her car to the sister-in-law who was married to the late Campbell, rather Heimenstein, the brother of the deceased man. Yes, the product of a double family marriage. We would later learn she killed her husband for the insurance money and her sister's husband for not giving her the money to support her gambling habit. Her sister walked in and caught her by surprise. Although the film did not record it properly, the evidence was enough to set an innocent man free. Instant star, my mother could not walk the street without people recognizing her. Soon, all of the top law firms were offering her a job. She would not accept any of their jobs. She and dad took a six-week vacation. Although mother did not receive payment from Wilton Trotter, he could not afford. She did, however, receive $50,000, a reward fund for recovering the money and jury paid to her in behalf of the Robert Heimesteins insurance company. Yes, Roxy would be the perfect name for my dad's MG. A spirited car named after a spirited woman. Only 10 more minutes and I clock out. Then I'm going from coast to coast on Route 66, the same highway dad and I took when I was only 14. You know, this is the anniversary of their marriage, and I could show them no better honor than to take the two of them on a trip. Here we go. Gassed up, enough clothes, sleeping bag, new tires, new shoes, cell phone, just in case I find myself in a fix. I start out in California and will go and go and go, no turning back until I get to the Atlantic. Driving on the highway with my portable CD AM FM radio plugged into the cigarette lighter. Everything original, including the eight track player. I put in their song for the trip, Born to be Wild. My parents and I were finally together again after so long a time. I was born right after mother and dad started their own law firm. With mother as the lead attorney, business was abundant, so much so that they could only now only take on capital murder cases and their starting fee was three hundred thousand dollars this guaranteed them business as only those who really wanted to be helped could avail themselves of their aid oh and Wilton he was hired as the chief investigator studied under mother and learned a lot my parents knew that charging so much and only taking capital murder cases would generate the worst society had to offer in clients. The mob, mostly. The two forged the niche in the political arena. Everyone feared being on the other side of the table. My mother only lost one case in her entire career. It happened when she was on her eighth case, five years after I was born. She wanted to devote more time to the case, but I unknowingly demanded her attention. It was an important case at that. Manson! Not the big one that he lost. No, this was one that started it all. She won, but he still had other charges pending in other counties, and Mother 
would grow tired of his ignorance and would refuse to represent him. I believe she really knew he was guilty and that when the red light abandoned you, you must be really, really guilty. She was called the red light because she would stop at nothing to prove a case. I've been driving for two days at 45 miles an hour. Excuse me. I don't need to rush, nor do I want to rush. I am on a family vacation. I just caught a flat. Brand new tires. And this is not even an SUV. Well, I'm going to take my time fixing the damage. I got 180 miles to go before the next small town. I have only seen two cars for the last 500 miles and none all day. I went to the auto association and got a map and a guide for this area. You know, this is a very beautiful country. The mountains, the trees, the skies, everything. I remember. I was 10. It was 1974 and mother and dad decided to send me to boarding school. I was not at all happy with this. This would be the first time that I would be away from them and the last time I would see mother. She had taken on the Santani, the Cass, Randy Burden case. The Cass, as he was called, because he would kill all of his victims, mold them in plastic, and bury them in lakes and ocean. The government had a case against Randy Burden. 120 counts of murder, racketeering, extortion, even treason. Because he avoided the draft a few years prior, he was... Let me see, how can I explain it so that you can understand? Okay, you know how you always hear about who's running the mobs family? Through the media? Well, you never heard of the cast as running the show, although he had been doing so for over 17 years. If everybody knew who was really running the show, the behind the scenes guy, it would no longer be a show and could not be believable. If the government knew who was really running a show, it would mean too much heat for the main and the main part of their focus. And mother and dad found out from the cast himself that he had made a promise to them. He told them, if anyone finds out, your son is a statue. If you back off this case, your son is a fish crystal. If you lose, I will provide you with your final resting place as a coral reef and give your son a bath that never ends. They knew what he meant. Excuse me folks, I have to go back up. They knew what he meant. The first thing was to get me away from the house so that they could concentrate and focus on the case. I was sent to the Trinidad Stockino Military Academy, the TSMA. That would prove to be my home away from home for the next seven years. Ah, I can't fix this tire. I'll just have to put the spare on. I don't know how it bursts. It looks like a tear in the side. And a brand new tire. An all-terrain tire. <sighs> oh, well, I guess I'll just have to get a replacement in 180 miles or so. Have you ever been driving and just drifted off, not knowing where the time passed or the miles went for the past two hours or 30 minutes? Thinking about my parents was a nice time. I was soon in a town which was no town. It only had a gas station, mini mart, and a house. That was it. I was feeling like I had traveled to another world. 470 miles. That would be how long it would be to the next town. Can't get my tire fixed. It would take a week just for the tire to arrive. And then came the rain. Not a light rain. A storm. One that was no surprise to me. The weather forecast said 80 miles per hour wind. I live in Seattle and the rain was no threat. Plus, I tested Roxy that she would weather the storm. 
I reduced my speed to 40 miles an hour. I wanted to conserve gas and enjoy the night lightning show. I was listening to my collection of the Beatles and singing along to the Raspberry Beret when my Roxy bounced very violently off the pavement twice. I got out of the car after pulling over, looked at the bottom for damage, checked the tires, looked at the ground to see what I had hit. Two potholes, big ones filled with water, and at night I never saw them but there appeared to be no damage. I found the little clearing, elevated just in case of a small flood, parked and enjoyed the radio CDs for the rest of the morning, until morning. Roxy, she also needed a rest. Come together! That was my folks' second favorite song. It was playing. It made me remember the year of the cast case. Mother and Dad poured all of their time into that case, and for fear that the cast would jump bail, the courts do not allow him to post bond. Mother would do like she always did in all of her with all of her clients. She would spend time getting to know Mr. Rutherburden. She refused to call him the cast. She told him that she was not going to listen to any more of his threats anymore. Her job was to get him free, and the threats would only interfere. She told him that if he ever threatened to harm me again, she would assume he spent time in a chemical room, lethal injection. She was a strong woman, and coward to no one. She, however, she did not tell Dad of this little planning planned meeting she knew he would not approve and he would have killed the cast himself if it were not for her she would be given mr. Rutherburton's word that he, she and dad would be given full cooperation and that the double T WT Wilton would be allowed to take whatever pictures he chose the statement was clear Mr. Cass, you are no longer in control. The government had plenty of solid evidence against him, one that was riddled with holes. My parents decided to discredit all of the government witnesses and to defend the character of the Cass. The issue became conspiracy and burden of proof that Cass pays his staff to pay off the federal judge of the case. That stupid plan failed. Oh. When mother found out, before it reached the media and father was doing interviews in another state, mother went to the jail at 3 a.m. The judge had scheduled a hearing at 9 later that morning. She had had it with that stupid man. He was killing his own case just like he had done his victims. She was determined to withdraw. After the interview, which was illegally taped by the government, it showed mother cursing him out and yelling at the cast she called him the casket <laughs> that is what she called him she said he was making his own grave she told him that even though she knew he was guilty she was still working to free him and could have done so if he would have let her do her job the following morning dad showed up in time for the hearing the judge and the others waiting for mother she never showed they held the hearing on the bribery charge and now no phone, no mail, no observation visits or excuse me, observation visits and an additional charge. Dad went outside the court building and he went home after four hours but once there, no mom. He would call everyone and eventually he had to report her missing. The car gone, bed partially slept in but no signs of her. After a week the federal attorney related to dad that the final conversation mother had with the cast had been taped. On the tape he threatened to kill her and told her she was a dead woman. She on tape brushed it off, told him that he was just as dead as she was to keep his childish threats to himself. They also taped the phone call the cast made after she left. He was heard to say she's gotta go tonight and don't let it be any need for discovery. 
This man had my mother killed. Dad couldn't prove it. The judge would not re relieve him from the case. So as upset and distraught as he was, Dad called me home from school to tell me what happened. How do you tell a 12-year-old that you believe his mother is dead? I didn't even understand death. I would sit there waiting to see her pull up in her MG, but she never showed. The media had spread rumors that Mother and Wilton were lovers and eloped, but that was absurd. Everyone heard the tape. When Wilton Trotter failed to report in with his update, Dad and the police went to his house, found the tape in the answering machine. All of the rest of the house was torn apart. Cameras, photos, everything that even looked like a picture was gone. Dad played the answering machine message. It was Mother telling Wilton to meet her in front of the entrance of his apartment. It stated that she would explain on the way where they were going. So, yes, the two of them, Wilton and Mother, were both missing, never to be seen again. Right after that memorial, the court ordered Dad to hurry along in the case. Dad was now on account of what had happened, said to be past the point of himself or principles. He went into court with a motion to dismiss for the government's willful violation of due process in taping the cast, attorney conversations, and phone calls without authorization. This disturbed everyone. Remember, it was as a result of these tapes we found out what happened to Mother. But to Dad, the court didn't care about him or mother. And if they were going to be stupid, he would show them something new. A man who got his client off on a technicality. It was not new to the court, but new for Dad. And he and mother always went to trial. They looked for the truth or violations, but never to get technical. It would be a long four months. The Cass had written Dad a total of ten million for his and mother's fee in representing him, and he offered Dad a couple of opportunities to represent some of his boys. At first, Dad didn't want to. Then, to everyone's surprise, he took the jobs. We moved to a 17-bedroom home near the ocean. I was back at the TSMA within six months after all the crying that I had done with my mommy being gone. I woke up in the morning. I woke up this morning. The radio still playing. The storm had stopped. Bright sunshine just over the horizon. Not too cold. Rather pleasant day. I will stretch and collect my thoughts. Put on my clean shirt and head the rest of the way to the next town. And after about 30 minutes of travel, I came upon a detour which stated the road was out and it took me in a different direction the map showed led nowhere but I would be a fool to go straight maybe they redid the road around here made it pan back to the main highway well I got nothing to lose so I headed down a mostly dirt road two hours and nothing oh my god how stupid I am I forgot to look at the gas gauge. I was on empty and the car died. Totally out of gas and definitely in the middle of nowhere. I got out of the car, took a look at underneath the car. I knew it! It could only be, yep, a hole. I had enough fuel to last for 300 miles, but the hole was too big. And I guess when I checked last night, the rain, yeah. I guess I didn't believe it. Oh well. I better get on the phone and get someone out here to help me. I still have music, food, and water. I'll be okay for a few days if need be. My father worked for the CAS, became his top attorney, keeping him and his men out of trouble. The judge of the case he had work in which the CAS attempted to bribe was now also on parole. 
my May 16th birthday, my father would take me for two weeks to the safari in Africa. And he brought me my first car, a completely equipped Z228. This was the car all of my friends wanted, but their dads would not trust them like my father trusted me. A's, that is all I brought home. I maintained straight A's. I was not interested in law like dad and my mother was, but I took it up in school just to please my dad. Then my dad worked with one of the cast top men. His name was North, also a military man. Their job was to broker a deal in getting drug shipments from South America to the United States and then used the money made to support the United States covert foreign relations. He, of course, at the time, Dad, would not let me know what was going on. He would never even talk about it. Now it was time for moves. With the president re-elected, the Olympics in America, California, no doubt. This was the timing many have waited for. Dad was appointed federal magistrate judge to fill the position of the one who was now on parole. <laughs> he was soon approved to be, excuse me, by the Senate and a, as a justice of the Supreme Court. I had been in the army for two years and although dad never admitted to it, I knew he had something to do with my being appointed Sergeant A at 21 years old. Sergeant, like I said, dad, he would handle all capital cases and the cast men he had charged uh, changed he was not the man I had grown up with with mother I guess that's what changed him out of range I can't get a signal I'll be here forever no any amount of traffic on this road I've got to conserve food perhaps by not fall no that would be stupid I'll wait till morning and then I'll go and try to get some get in range that means I'll be here for the night. Oh, well, at least I got the Beatles, food, water, two gallons worth. Well, I better formulate a plan. I don't even know in which direction I'm traveling in. Let's see the map. It says the closest thing to anything is 100 miles north. Over that second range of mountains. I guess I'll get a, fall, a full workout. I'm just glad it's not too hot. Now, we have a vice president making president, and that North fella, he had been caught. He had been revealed as the one delivering drugs under a covert command of the army. All the plans, all the secrets, Dad immediately ordered the sealing of the record in the nation's interest. He knew it would not last long. He did not have the jurisdiction to do so. He did it to shift all fears that he was involved in the leak in any way. The cast patted Dad on his back, telling him that for 12 years he had his doubts about him. But now he was convinced of his loyalty. Dad would quickly suggest that there were bigger problems on their hands. What if the others involved cracked? He said we have to get word to everyone. By 2 a.m., everyone was on the same page. For the past 12 years, there would be leaks about the operation of government, cast and his men. No one knew who was the cause behind these little embarrassments, but no real damage. Not until the time when Hussein was angered because the cast failed to deliver the weapons he promised in exchange for over 4 million barrels of crude oil. So he stormed Kuwait, his southern neighbor. I don't think he feared the caste. He really did not know the power one man could wield. He told Saddam, Okay, little rat, time to go back home and leave your little friends alone. <laughs> this only pissed Saddam off. He was not afraid. He had enough people, so he thought he could challenge the caste. By this time, North had faded out of the spotlight just like dad had promised. But war was the only talk by the cast, and dad would make it a point to be at every meeting. It used to be that dad would be searched every time he met the cast, but that would stop soon. He had befriended him, yet the metal detector 
had to be cleared. Dad had a plan, and his plan would be a one-time only shot. A one-time plan that had to work. Dad would get the cast along, speak about personal issues concerning whom he thought the spy would. He tried to come close to the cast, but he grabbed Dad and searched him. Dad apologized and said he just did not want to be overheard. He said he believed that the justice of the Supreme Court was the leak. He gave tape conversations of the justice from 16 years past, making it seem like it was just weeks prior. The focus now turned, and now how to kill a Supreme Court justice. The next day, Dad and the cast were discussing how to kill the justice. When Dad started to lean over, he hesitated and asked if it was okay the cast allowed him, and Father did. No one would have suspected anthrax. Right in the mouth, in the air, the cast yelled, and his men came in immediately, killing Dad. Before he died, he blew it into the air, so did all of them in there died as well. It was easy, and Dad knew how stupid they were. He knew they would never test to see what substance they had just ingested. Anthrax mixed with cyanide. He was taking no chances. Dad would speak to me only a week prior over the phone. I should have known something was wrong. He told me he loved me and told me he was about his will. I didn't see it. I should have paid better attention. You know, when you're out in the open, you get to talk to nature and say what you feel. There are no radio stations nearby. I pick up nothing. I've just been listening to my CDs. I'm keeping myself in the shade so I can save as much water as possible. My dad would plan from the day he set the cast free to make him pay for mother's death. He worked for him, kept all the names of everyone except for the justice. The cast had taken his family hostage and this put more than enough fear in his heart. The police and the CDC found that list on dad's body. Dad had committed a murder-suicide. He transferred ownership of all property to me the day before, gave controlling interests of the law firm to his former partner, and took the anthrax from a recent case of his. The perfect opportunity. Fifteen people died as a result, and now he was dead. Saddam started to get a big head and refused to go back. Even with Powell guaranteeing him the weapons promise, the start of the Gulf War, the reason why Saddam did not get his weapons is because someone had mixed mercury with the oil by placing it in the tanks the oil was put into. The oil was practically ruined. The cost to separate it would be at least 200 billion. Then Dad sent the weapons to China instead, made it look like they seized it. Dad made sure that neither the court nor the cast would benefit from all of his work. He had planned and had waited 16 years to make them see what my mother had meant to him. For 16 years, Dad did not drive Roxy. He saved her for me. He left me a little bit of both, he and Mommy. That was 10 years ago, and I have taken the money and donated all of it. Sold the property and bought a small home. I, with my stocks, live off of only the interest. I work for the sake of what dad and mother taught me. Always earn your way in life. All day, I should be bored, but I'm very happy. I know my parents are proud of me, and their fears, along with the police, of my being killed as a result of his actions, were put to rest finally last week. When I rejected the police protection, it's been ten long years, I usually put my words on tape, then I tape them up and eventually plan to put a book together on all of this. It's just that you can't hear the music over the paper, but that only leaves room for the internet. Wait, what's that? A car? All the way out here? Two cars? Who? I know those cars. They didn't give up. I, I gotta go. That's them in the background shooting at me. They took a couple of shots at me gazing on my arm. They can't be too smart. 
No 4x4s or other off-road vehicles. I ran north because in the desert. But in the desert, where was I going? It's been about an hour. I stopped bleeding. Cell phone is in my pocket. On full charge. I'm out of range still. I took the two shirt t-shirts I had on and taped them to the back of my shoes to cover my tracks as I ran. I can see a fire. I don't have to guess. I know what's burning. Roxy. They're making sure I have no way out. No water outside of the water in my bot sports bottle. Man, I'm tired. And they haven't given up. They've got radios and backup on the way. Man, how can I? What do I do? Nobody knows where I am. Wait a minute. Listen. He's talking to me. Chris. Hey. Look, there's no way out for you. Oh, you're dead. You're a dead man. Yeah, you'd think we would have forgotten what your father did. No, we were just patient as he was. He waited to set us up. So he waited to set you up. The flat tire? That was us. The potholes? <laughs> well, not quite. They were the result of time motion explosions. Yeah, we blocked the road. The road leading here is blocked as well. You're caught. And now, gasping for your final breath as we bring down the net. How does it feel? <laughs> I can imagine. Wait. No, I can't. <laughs> you get a good night's sleep. We'll have a copter here in the morning and 50 more men. I promise I won't kill you. Well, at least I won't do it quickly. No, I will make it painful and castrate every limb of your body every way possible. Get it? <laughs> You'll get to rest from now until tomorrow and we'll make you run. I've got no time to rest. I got one option. In the desert. It's just rained last night. <sighs> I served in the army. Survival is what I was trained for. If I keep moving, no. They planned this. They are expecting me to run. Waiting for me. I have to dig. And keep taking a break. Regardless of farm in the desert rain for the past two days but do I have the strength and with only a 10 inch blade I had it just in case something out here attacked me now I have to rely on it and really use it to save my life if that is possible good finally not a moment too soon the sun is rising and I can hear more cars I moved all of the excess dirt scattered all around so that is not as obvious the whole and like I did to my dad in Africa when we were in the beach I covered him in sand both straws one from the water bottle another from the briefing I got to cover my body completely eyes nose everything I wish I had a Snickers looks like I'm gonna be here for a while here they come. Man, this had better work. It's a good thing I had to dig close to the side of the mountain. Now, when they drive their cars, they won't crush me while trying to find me. Oh, another good thing. Rain! It's starting to rain. Well, it's not a very good thing, but it helps to camouflage my position. I gotta stop speaking. I hear them getting close. But, but I'm not going to die without having some record of what happened. I'll meet my end on the record. Okay. He must be over this way. Hey, he's not smart enough to circle back. You guys, Benny, Slug, Sherman, on foot. Try to find some tracks or signs of where he might be. Boss. Yeah, what is it? We think we spotted him on the other side of the mountain. How'd he get past Bundy? Never mind. How the... He'll answer to me for this. All right, men, let's go. But keep an eye out of where we left off just in case we have to return. It must be around 12 o'clock. I have sat here or laid without moving. Turned the tape off five hours ago after they left just in case it was a trick. I kept silent. 
I can't move. If I do, I'll give up my position. That was only a light rain, nothing extremely big. Stuck, no help. Oh, my stupid self, I left my cell phone on. But I was sure to cut it off. It doesn't matter, now the battery is low. I hear the helicopter, which means they're still out there. Oh God, what am I gonna do? I knew better. Right after Dad set the cast up, I knew the issue wasn't settled. He caused the downfall of several leaders. Hell, even Dad, he was the one who paid Hinckley to shoot the president. And now, he lives a good life. It's better than death penalty he was facing in his pending trial. Yeah, Dad made sure the media never found out. When that didn't work, he arranged my father for his chief executive secretary, security staff to poison his food. Not to cause his death, no, but to take away memory and cause brain damage. You know, to those without the ability to know the time of day where the game of life, uh, the, the time of day we're in the game of life, yo dad, because of you, I'm a living dead man, as it took time for it to work. They planned well, but must have known this would come back on me. Mm. I think that's why he did not leave the family business to me, or connect me to any of his contract. But what he did, he thinks, was going to happen. Excuse me, what did he think was going to happen? That they would forget all about it and move on? He had planned. He caused so many conflicts, controversies, that they were too busy cleaning up the mess. He left them to come after me. I was in the custody of the army. They protected me by charging me with AWOL when they knew I was at Dad's funeral. I only realized later that Dad planned that as well. He placed me in the army and placed me where I sat for five years. The only place that would hire me after Dad left his company. Then I had to sell everything, yet he planned that too. All of the money from the cast had raised for our family. It's funny how you don't realize too many things until years later. It's been at least 14 days. I've been counting the light on top of the ground. They're still out there. They haven't given up. It's getting real bad hiding here. I'm almost out of tape and juice. My water ran out three days ago. And even if I had the strength to run, the ground has turned to rock. And I can't even turn my head. Last night, they were right above me, walking over this whole area. They know that I have not escaped. I haven't called the police or tried to get any help. By now, someone must know something is wrong. Oh no, that's right. I told them three weeks. Oh, man, I've sat here and made my own grave, and now... I will die like all the rest of the cast victims in the tomb. You know, I remember when I was 15, Dad told me. That was Chris. 22 days after his last recording, he died of dehydration. He had implanted a chip. We had implanted a chip in his phone to locate him when he refused protection. We swapped phones with him. It still contained the chip but he was unaware of it. Every time the phone was activated, we were trying to contact him via signal. All he had to do was dial 411, his code. Why he didn't remember that, I can only guess that he really thought that it was over. Chris was naive. That's why his father gave strict instructions to watch him. He was to die a horrible death. It would seem that while still alive, but just barely, he was being eaten alive by ants, beetles, and maggots. He, if he wanted, he could not even call us for help. The dried up saliva from his mouth sealed it shut along with its eyes. 
No slower or worse death for a man to experience. But Chris did not die in vain. He did himself justice. In the tradition of his mother and father, he collected and gathered evidence against the criminals. His taping the suspects' conversations that were, that were in pursuit of him and all the other classified information he revealed helped us to get indictments on 32 people. To everyone's surprise, the media and the press received copies of the tape. I could not possibly even imagine how they could have obtained such, since I was the only one to have access. But I let the investigation and I found no evidence of any leak, so the file has been sealed and the investigation of Chris' death solved and closed, as told by Agent Stanton of the Regional Supervisor of the FBI. A Voltaire Voltaire production. This is the publisher. Thank you once again for listening to The Lonely Highway.